Dirty, dirty, dirty. Sorry, I didn't have my, uh, what you call it on. That thing where you can see where people are talking to you. Lane RLP6. Going to try it. He was sent to me. We'll see how it goes. See if I like it. The tin note smells very familiar. Very fruity. Or not fruity. Like a chocolatey. Like a nutty smell. Yeah. Pour some out for you. Hang on. See all the... All the reds, um, not really getting a good draw off this. Yeah, it's got like a chocolatey, nutty kind of smell to it. I mean, it's not a bad smoke. It's very mild. Very mild. But then again, I'm smoking it in a 9mm. So, for me, the true test would be to smoke it in a non-filtered. Rid of some of this trash, trash on my desk. Like a Meerschaum. Ugh. I don't like Meerschaum pipes. Never, never, uh, never got into them. But Meerschaums are supposedly one of the best pipes for tasting. Sorry about the noise. For tasting what you're smoking. So, at least that's what I've been told. But I just can't, I can't smoke them. I don't know what it is with me. Good evening, Richard. Last week we peaked out at close to 30 <coughs> on here. I got the COVID, I'm coughing on here. I don't know who will this week. I didn't think we came close and then when it was over it shows you how many were watching at one time. Yeah, this isn't a bad smoke, Johnny. I'll... Uh, This is part of that big box that was sent to me. I smoke it in one of my in my pipe that I reserve that one Tracy Mincer that I reserve for Virginia's. I'll smoke it in that. No, I don't have enough hair on my balls to inhale. <laughs> oh, there goes that video. That's going to be bombed out by YouTube. Who gives a crap anyway? I don't. And my coffee black, of course. Um, no, I don't inhale. Um, any true uh, Patchett seller, good evening. Any true pipe smoker will tell you don't inhale. 
It's like cigars. You don't inhale. Yeah, Susan's watching. Nice retro on this. Very smooth, very mild. This RLP6. I don't like the tin note. But it's a very mild smoke. So, you don't... It almost smells like Sleepy Hollow. Drop the lid. But, uh, there won't be no tongue bite on this one. But it's good. It's a good one. It's I the only lane I tried lane lane ready rub didn't like it wasn't a fan. Yeah, I inhaled a Pall Mall once when I was a kid. Thought I was gonna cough up a lung because when you're a kid you don't know what you're doing. But anyhow, I, I smoked lane ready rub ready rub. I didn't like it. Lane one Q is about all I like and. This RLP6 is pretty good stuff. So, I'll smoke it again. I shouldn't have smoked it in my Sven board, but I haven't smoked this pipe since I cleaned it. Deep Hollow? No. Who makes it? C and D? I'm surprised. <laughs> Unlike Sleepy Hollow, the tin note smells like Sleepy Hollow, I think. Um, Unlike Sleepy Hollow, it doesn't taste like cigarettes. And that's not against anybody that smokes Sleepy Hollow. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, Middleton's Cherry Blend, over the counter. I don't do any of the OTC blends. Um, I haven't since 1993. Anything in McClellan is just good. Isn't that right, old dirty? Anything McClellan's. Most of the McClellans, I should say. I haven't tried them all. All the Frog Mortons I did. 40th anniversary I've tried. Yeah, Granger, I was going to buy it. And somebody else said the same thing. Smelled like cigarettes. And then somebody else told me, basically, it's cigarette tobacco. What's everybody smoking? I feel like I'm yelling. I don't think I should be yelling. All tobacco is taxed the same, I think. Unless you live in Washington, it's like 90%. Pennsylvania, they tax tobacco pretty high. I chewed snuff 
back in the day when I, well, for almost 30 years, and all my friends that shoot snuff with me and the tobacco, cigarette tobacco tax went up. I said, you watch. They know they're going to get it. They're going to see if they can get the money, if people will still buy, and then they'll tax the rest of the tobacco, and that's what they did. Black Cavendish and wine. And that's what they did in Pennsylvania. As soon as they started tax, that cigarette tax went up, I should say, significantly back in the 90s. They realized that people were still going to buy cigarettes. They raised all the tobaccos. Chewing tobacco, snuff tobacco, pipe tobacco, cigar tobacco. PBR. Dark Strong Kentucky. That's good stuff. McClellan's 2010 Holiday Spirit in your Dunhill. You, hey, Old Dirty Patches got a Dunhill. Old Dirty's a collector of Dunhill pipes. <laughs> Some of the best pipes ever made, right there. Old Dirty and I were just talking about that. That and Chavanelli, right? Yeah. Big Phil the Piper. What's happening, Big Phil? Phil. Mm, mm. Phil, Phil. I don't know what's up with Missouri Mearsham. I ordered the Country Gentleman pipe last week. It hasn't come in yet. There's your stem, buddy. Look at that. Dark green. What do you think, Phil? I hope you didn't turn me on. That's my wife's job. <laughs> well, I'm glad you made it, Phil. Yeah, this will be the last... Tony, Sigmund Tony, how you doing, brother? This will be the last live for a while. I got to finish. Here's the problem I'm having. Uh, I don't know if you all can see this. Yeah, a lump back here. Those of you know I had surgery. My neck injury isn't from head banging in the 80s. Um, that's a cyst and it's causing a lot of issues with the rods in my neck which is forcing me uh, migraines, tension, severe pain so dear executive order no more tobacco coming to a state near you there you go you heard it from the dirty man himself um, and I'm not kidding. Watch. They're already trying to take a whole bunch of stuff away. Anyhow, so I have to, uh, I'm going to see the doctor about this tomorrow. And if they can, it's a cyst. And if they can drain it, they'll drain it. If they can't drain it, I'll have to have like an invasive type surgery where they cut it out. And I don't know if he'll do it. He probably will make me go to the neurosurgeon because it's so close to the rods in my neck. Um, but that's not why the lives are going to stop for a while. Um, I also have a pipe rack to do. I'm making a pipe rack for Paladin Piper. I got a desk that's getting finished. that I'm trying to finish for another customer. And then the granddaddy of them all is, uh, I had to rip up the subflooring in my main bathroom. So I gotta get that done. So with everything going on with my neck and the pain and everything, it's a couple hours here, a couple hours there, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. When I feel good, I go into the bathroom and I start working. Um, or I get on those projects and I start working. So one of the tools that I was waiting, I had to order uh, a new tool 
that I'm making this pipe rack with um, because the one I had wasn't working. And that came in today, so I'll be. Uh, I have to take advantage of those moments when I'm feeling okay and get that stuff done. Because Mrs. Bearded Welshman really, really, really uh, wants me to get the bathroom done, and I really want to get it done. Patches wants to know how many pipes will it hold? Well, he requested 70 to 80 pipes. It's going to be a big pipe rack, and it's going to have doors on it. Um, it's going to be a big pipe rack. So, uh, yeah, 70 to 80. I want to make it something special for Pat, because Pat's been good. Pat's been good to me. Pat's been really good to me. So I want to make, I want to make it really nice for him and uh, I got blades for my planers yeah patches I'm gonna put that comment up they have I have to approve that I don't care they're putting commercials up I'm getting nothing for it screw them so they demonetize it I don't care I'm not monetized I don't punch the monetize mon what do you call it the monetize button <laughs> they put commercials up anyway But well, yeah, it's a lot of pipes. So, and Pat's probably got more than that. I don't know. If he comes on tonight, we can ask him. So, yeah, 70, 70 to 80 pipes. Um, and then I got to ship it to Kentucky, which that's going to cost him a little bit of money. So 70 to 80 pipes. Um, I'm going to draw it out. Send him. Have him approve it. Because 70 to 80 pipes, you're looking at, say you get a cabinet this, this wide. That'll hold 20 pipes. Close to 15 maybe. I don't know. Hey, Smokey Dragon, thank you. Yeah, I don't want to keep you up, brother. So yeah, it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big pipe rack, but what the customer wants, the customer gets, excuse me while I blow my nose. RLP is pretty good. This RLP 6. I didn't think I'd enjoy it that much. So anyhow, Phil, as soon as your country gentleman comes in, that's the other thing I've got to do. I got Phil, Phil paid me straight up. Paid me ahead of time for the pipe. So I'm waiting for that to come in, and I'm going to customize that for you, Phil. And then I'm going to get that sent off to you. Hopefully the pipe will get here this week. i got to find out where it's at. But we're talking the United States Post Office. They lost the first order I sent in for tools. They lost it. I had to get my money back. Yeah, Richard, it'll cover the whole wall. Well, there's guys out there that, you know, they got a pretty big pipe collection. I used to have close to 70 pipes and I only have about I don't know maybe 40 now John Peter Reese how are you doing man I only have about 40 now because um, I just wasn't smoking them sorry folks I don't mean to turn my back on I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to smoke next where's my tub we got my tub oh 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 dag on it I forgot I had this. Plum pudding reserve. Special reserve. Well, you know what? I'm going to open that up. Listen for the pssst. Ah, ain't no pssst.
Look at that. If I can get it out of there. That's a freaking brownie. <laughs> Look at that sucker. Now, plum pudding I've had. And I like. It's okay. That's not going to have enough time to dry. Um, so I'm going to do that another day. Um, plum pudding I've had. And I like. Special reserve I haven't, have not had. So I don't know. I don't know what it's like. As the Bee Gees would sing, you don't know what it's like to love somebody. Hackett pipes. Yeah, those are nice pipes. Yeah, I think that's Jake Hackett. You mean Jake Hackett. Jake Hackett lives in Lancaster County. It's not far from me. If that's the pipe you're talking about, Smokey. Jake, yeah. Jake Hackert. I think it's Hackert. Um, he lives in Lancaster County. Um, there's another underrated pipe, pipe smoker, yeah. Pipe maker. He's a pretty good pipe maker. And I haven't had the pleasure of getting one of his pipes yet. So... Do something a little different here. Let's go for some, see if this needs to dry out. Nah, that's pretty good. No, nah, that needs to dry out. Hey, Josh. Joshua Fritz. There you go, Josh. Dirty, I was going to ask you if you had any hackered pipes. Yeah, that's too wet. I got to I got to smoke something that's not going to take much cuz I don't have my tray in here and I don't want to leave y'all. Leave y'all. Leave y'all. Sound like a freaking Sorry about that. Lost my mic. Sound like a like a southern boy. Where's my other? Sam Galworth Perfection. Let's go with that. Yeah, I can't go wrong with a Sam Galworth. Sam Galworth Perfection. I'm going to go with that. Put that in my Boswell's pipe. That pipe smokes good. Smokes everything good. But then again... It's all in the pipe maker. And partially the tobacco. And partially the pipe smoker. You got two cobs from him. I should I should contact him and then go down and hand pick them up, you know, in person and see if he'll do an interview with me. That'd be cool. Let's light them up. We got bad weather coming our way tonight. We got one to three inches of snow and freezing rain. We haven't got, haven't smoked this since I got it. I have so much tobacco that people have sent me um, besides Old Dirty that it's hard to keep track of who sent what you know unless I put it down rich gal from Virginia <sighs> what are you smoking tonight rich gal
I think I'm going to smoke the plum pudding tomorrow morning after I smoke my regular morning. Eileen's Dream, I haven't had that. I don't think I've had that. I don't think I've had it at all. Has anyone got a J. Mouton pipe? Well, Patches, if you go watch Old Dirty Piper's latest video, it is the most beautiful Jason Mouton pipe that I have ever seen. It is a beautiful pipe. Um, it is... Yeah, I don't care about the thumbs down, Big Phil. It don't bother me. But Jason Mouton uh, made it, Old Dirty Commission to pipe from him. This pipe is phenomenal. Uh, I tried to buy it off Old Dirty, but he ain't giving that thing up. And I'll tell you what. That is one good looking pipe. But then again, Jason is one phenomenal pipe maker. I was going to do a cigar tonight, but I'm in the house, so I got the fan going, and cigars are a lot more. Hmm, Yachtsman Flood. Rich Gal, were you on when I showed the uh, plum pudding? That's the plum pudding reserve, special reserve. Look at that. That is one thick brownie right there. Chris. Chris Morley, the rising superstar of YouTube, of the YouTube piping community. In bed zoo. Well, I don't want to keep you up, Chris, but congratulations, man. Your channel's growing fast. Really fast. And I'm I'm not just saying it, I'm saying it's growing fast. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, old dirty. That's probably what it is dirty. Um, patches. Old dirty's got to talk to. He's got a couple of pipes from Jay. He, that's not his first pipe. He's bought a few off of Jason, and uh, they're really nice pipes. That's the nicest pipe I've ever seen, though. That's just hands down. It rivals the best. That it's just that beautiful. It is a work of art, and if I had a picture of it, I'd show it to you. All right, Chris, you have a good night. Get a good night's sleep. Uh, Smokey, I'm gonna be down there. I was supposed to go tomorrow, but the bad weather coming. Probably not gonna go. And I know he has Eileen's dream, um, so I'll probably pick up. Maybe I'll pick up a tin of that. Chris, have a good night. Oh, man. So, anyhow, I'm trying to get comfortable. Rich Gal, what'd you do? Get knocked off? You're back. Oh, no. no that was my, my mistake. Oh, nice. I need to get to Boswell's sense of... Um... They can order, Rich Gal, they can order direct from Boswell's. Mr. Boswell himself told me they ship international. So they can order direct from him and he'll ship it. So that way you're not paying the cost. Whoever you're shipping it to, they'll pay the cost of the shipping. All they got to do is get on the website. And you got to, you got to, um, if you're anywhere near Winchester, 
uh, John Hayes tobacconist. That pipe shop is really good. I met Mr. Hayes by accident on the river. Uh, he now does fishing guides. And his son runs the shop now. John Hayes tobacconist. I believe it's in Winchester. Or Wheeling. Maybe it's Wheeling. I have to, I have to look it up. Now, Dublin Piper bought me a hat. Here's the bad part about moving, folks. Dublin Piper sent me a hat, and it had the Welsh Dragon on it. It was a nice black hat with the Welsh Dragon. And when I moved, I have a bunch of boxes that I can't find. It might. Rich Cow, it might. But they do send direct. They do ship international. Uh, but anyhow, Dublin sent me a hat, and I can't find it. Well, it's in a box of hats. I have a whole bunch of baseball hats I can't find. Curmudge and Piper. Mudge is in the house. Mudge, Mudge, Mudge. You better be taking care of the divine mislead, Doug. Uh, J Carter Hall, yes. Don't like it. Um, I think it's junk. For me, it's junk. Um, it smells like Levi Garrett chewing tobacco. And it takes forever. It's like... to uh, You got to let it dry, I think. Mine was goopy. I got it in a bag in the pouch. I didn't like it. Um, to me, it tasted it tasted like smoking chewing tobacco. That's what it tasted like. I just didn't like it. Did not like it at all. All right, Rich Gal, you have a good night. Yes, get on there and check them out. Yeah, they might remember who I am. Archie will if you talk to Archie. Yeah, I'll bet you got a load of them. Hold off on that, Smokey. Because um, I want to try to find a hat. There's five boxes that we have in storage that I have to go look at. I have to pull them out of storage here. And look at look through them, and I'm wondering. With one of the, they're they're not marked. Because it was a nice gift from Mick, and I feel bad. But if you're willing to do that, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> No, I don't have a Welsh flag. We have a Celtic shop. Uh, I'm probably about 45 minutes away from there. And I saw on their website that they have them. But I'm not going to drive all the way over there to see if they have them. Because if they don't have them, then I'll be mad. You love Carter Hall? Yeah, see, you know, smoke what you like, like what you smoke. John, um, N.W. Piper, good evening. John Pitteris, um, you might like it. Uh, my recommendation is if you don't like it, don't throw it away. Put it away. Come back and visit it again. Um, I don't like it. I smoked it a couple of times. I don't like it. There's a lot of people that do like it. Doug's one of them, and that's cool, because I don't, 
Now it's it's sitting it's sitting in a pouch. There, there you go, John. Yeah, if if it was tub was sitting ready to to go, and you liked it, there you go. Uh, Doug likes it. Curmudgeon Piper likes it. He's grown to like it. Grown, grown to love it. But so, anyhow, I've uh, so for those of you who are just joining, this will be the last live for a while because I got a lot of projects around the house that have got to get done, and I have to get this. I have a a lump in the back of my neck. It's a cyst. That's what they're telling me. Um. I had to foray into Burnley Burns. So that and I had to tear out our main bathroom, which is the only bathroom with a shower in it. And the stall, I didn't, sh I didn't tear the shower stall out. Everything else. Floors up. Sink and toilet are out. It grows on you like a fungus. It's about half and half that like Carter Hall, I guess. And that's not a plug for half and half. That stuff is horrible. I'm sorry. I don't know how anybody can smoke that stuff. Um, but anyhow, so for the next few weeks, I won't be on doing lives because I, I have to get the stuff done. When I'm feeling up to it, my neck's feeling good, I got to work. And then when it starts bothering me, I put the tools down and rest. Did you ever experiment with adding toppings to your tobaccos? No, Big Phil, I have never done that. Um, thought about pouring a little whiskey in them, drying them out. Yeah, half and half. I'm with you, NW. Now, I've mixed some tobaccos together. Didn't like them. Um, I'm not a blender. Don't pretend to be one. Don't want to be one. Um, I just haven't experimented enough, so I haven't really, so I don't give it much thought. That's because you're smoking ash. <laughs> the half and half. There's something in that half and half that just ain't right. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> so Walter Raleigh, I tried that. I really wanted to like that. Couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. Didn't like it. I mixed it with something else, and I said I blended some stuff. So I mixed it with another tobacco, and it just didn't do anything for me. Um, now, I've, someone told me to buy the uh, Black Cavendish and mix in, in a little bit of, with some, some of the Virginias uh, that I have, and I'm just not good at that. I'm not. I was never good at chemistry. So I don't want to ruin. I hate wasting tobacco. Is what I hate doing. But the Sawara Raleigh, I tried that. I wanted to like it, but I just no nope, can't. I got a bunch of their uh, vintage tins around here somewhere. I think I have them put away. Old vintage Sir Walter Raleigh tins, an old velvet tin. Um, they're antiques. Adam Northskog. Well, thank you for being a new subscriber. I appreciate you and welcome. Everybody say hi to Adam. Velvet was pretty good. I didn't, I, I, it was okay. Um, Half and half is the devil. Yeah, um, velvet wasn't bad. I, I, uh, I was planning on it 
being as bad as half and half. And it wasn't bad. Uh, I haven't smoked it in a long time. But then, it, you know, I have all this other stuff. And I just, I don't, I, I don't think to buy the Codger blends. Um, not the co not necessarily Codger blends, but the over-the-counter stuff. I just don't think to buy it. Like, everybody, isn't half and half the one that supposedly you can't get right now? Somebody, I think somebody's been posting that on the Facebook page or something. But I see it everywhere I go. Um, it's all over the place. And I don't, I don't get, I don't get it. You didn't like velvet. You're not American. Come on, Doug. But you love tacos. Doug loves tacos. Curmudgeon Piper is the biggest taco freak out there. That means I'm sleepy in Welsh John, so catch you soon, my good. I'm going to be with you. No star. No star, Smokey Dragon. No star. I hope I said it right. No star. No, no star. No star. No star. I think it's how you say it. I'm learning. I'm on that, that app, that thing that you sent me. You know that thing? That little thing you sent me? I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm trying. Would you ever have bite tobacco cigars? No, I never have. They suck all of them dirty, sis. <laughs> uh, I never tried to uh, pipe tobacco cigars. Um, and a Brian Dorn. Hmm. Oh, Brian Doran. Oh, Beans 316. You got one of his pipes. Good for you, man. Brian makes some good pipes. Anytime, Adam. You're welcome. Brian uh, makes really nice pipes. And he does good YouTube videos. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> the curmudgeon piper has had a bad experience with, with tacos at some point in his life. So he's not a taco lover. Banker's mixture. J.J. Fox Banker's Mixture. I've never heard of that, Adam. Uh, anybody ever heard of that? I've never heard of J.J. Fox Banker's Mixture. J.J. Fox, I've never heard of it. Is that a is that a uh, aromatic or a vapor? Or is that like an English? Doug, do you like enchiladas? Tortillas? Anything like that? There's another guy. Watch Curmudgeon Piper's video ch video channel. He's got the coolest fedoras. And the beard looks good too there, Doug. And he has a beautiful album, elbow. <laughs> See, enchiladas, they're good. I had them when I was in Texas. That's the breakfast one, I think, the enchiladas. And he has a beautiful elbow. And W likes your elbow, Doug. You don't have a fetish for elbows, do you, NW? You have three. Of Brian's pipes, Adam. You said I have three of them. You have three of Brian's pipe. Pipe time. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. Working on a tin of Fox Hibernia. I don't know the Fox blends. <laughs> Not that you know. I'll have to look into them. I don't know anything about them.
Ron, how you doing, buddy? It's in English. I figured it was, since you said it was a mixture, it's usually a, okay. Mild smoke, Adam? Strong? Is it a mild, medium, or strong? Or strong? Hmm. Hibernia is a mild arrow with vanilla. Okay. I used to really like the vanillas. And then I kind of got away from them. And I don't know what it is. I tried to go back to them. And uh, I just couldn't get back into them. OBX in the house. Sooner or later, Steph and Skip will show up. If they ain't in bed. They're old. Of course, it is two hours behind, I think, in Texas. So they shouldn't be in bed yet. Probably eating dinner. Or they're lurking. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mike is in the house. Cane Rod Piper. Pipe royalty. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> oh, N.W. Piper's got a fetish with curmudgeon Piper's elbow. <laughs> Medium to strong? I ah, probably would like that then. Everybody say hi to Mike. Cane Rod Piper in the house. Who's on this Friday, Mike? I just lurk. I've been lurking lately on lives. I haven't been saying a whole lot. Stefan Skips I did this Saturday. I finally... Tilted Piper Steve. Liking your videos, man. Just you, Friday? Yeah, Cane Rod and Old Dirty Piper are now on Rumble, as well as Classical Pipes. Classical Pipes, I think, left YouTube altogether. Uh, Old Dirty Piper is pretty much leaving altogether. Um, and Cane Rod, I would assume you're not far behind. And you're going to leave YouTube eventually altogether, too. I don't know. But uh, Kilted Piper, I've been watching his videos. If you haven't subbed him, check him out. Good stuff. Night Piper, too. The guy doesn't have a lot of subs. I don't know why. I love his, I get a kick out of his relaxed demeanor. Um, just a very relaxed guy. And his humor. I like his humor. Very dry sense of humor. All right, I'm going to smoke something a little bit. A little bit. Uh, let's see. And it'll be my last pipe of the night. That's my L.L. Bean. I think, I think I'll smoke that. This is the one I got from Mark at TPI. He sent me a... They, he sent me this in replaced, replacement of a freehand that he sent me that I won. I never got here that was worth a couple hundred dollars and mark being a stand-up guy he is sent me a beautiful ll bean because he knows i like the ll beans i had one i lost it and i found it thank you and so thank you mark tpi steve did the thunder and lightning wake you guys up this morning you guys heard of walt disney briar pipe no nw piper uh i don't know anything about the walt disney briar pipes I don't know anything about them. I think I'll smoke some Boswell's best. 
Kane Rod likes Carter Hall. Kane Rod, yep, Mike likes Carter Hall. Mike's buying the Carter Hall estate. He's the secret, the new secret owner. He, he just won't tell anybody. Kane Rod's rich, filthy rich, making all that money, big man down there in the Philadelphia region. He's moving to the Carter Hall estate. Kane Rod Piper bought the Carter Hall estate. That's a good rumor to start him with. On YouTube. <laughs> you need a stem for your LL bean. Uh, send it to Mike Kane Rod. This Boswell's Best is really good. I'm disappointed. The bad weather. We're going to... We, we got one to three inches of snow. It's all that pipe repair money. You went in on it. You went in on halves with Steph and Skip, didn't you? Um, yeah, I'm supposed to go to Boswell's tomorrow. A buddy of mine is supposed to come down from up north. And then we were going to go, but we got one to three inches of snow coming starting around 10, and then it's supposed to change over to freezing rain. He's not going to take the trip. I don't do any unnecessary driving because of this. I'm already in one accident, broke one pin, I don't want to break any others. Kane Rod, we should start the rumor that Steph and Skip secretly bought Carter Hall Estate. She's an artist. She's got the money. Or maybe Mel. The garbage man Piper. Maybe he bought it. Mel's got some pipes up for sale. Saw that today. I don't know if you guys saw that video. He's got some pipes he's getting rid of. Go check that out. But, hmm, how do you like that? That is a nice, there are guys on here that can just do beautiful work. Cane Rod, T Tobacco Pipes International, Mark. Steph actually called the realtor. Yes, she did. I think she talked about that. Um, but Cane Rod Piper, Tobacco Pipes International, they do really nice work on restoring pipes. Um, I'm better at customizing cobs than restoring pipes. Um, I just, it's a lot of patience. A lot of patience to do that. Gamecock Piper, welcome. Man, I haven't heard, I haven't heard from you in a while. You've been lurking, haven't you? They do. They do. Kane Rod and Mark TPI do great work. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that I wish I had the patience for, but I don't. I do not have the patience for restoring. You know, I clean my pipes. Um, if I want to get them restored, I'll send them out. I'd rather pay somebody. You're welcome, Mike. I'd rather pay somebody that can do them and do them well, do them right, and do do a really good job on them. Um, if I took the time, and Mike will tell you this, um, if, if I just took the time. It's a, it's a process of learning, and you just take your time, and you learn, and you watch, and you learn. And you watch other guys, and you just learn, you know. 
I'll be right back. I need to go get some water. So let me put the mic right there. And I will be right back. Merle's going to join us. Sorry about the noise, folks. There's my boy. Mm -hmm. Give buddy. I need the mic up. Come on, bud. Show everybody who... Come on. Show everybody they want to see Merle. Come on. Come on. Come on. I think he's afraid of my pipe. Come on. Come on. You want to come up? You want to come up? Come on. Come on. Come on. There he is. Say hello to Merle. Say hello to Merle. That's my boy. Yeah, it's lots of work, Steve. And I love it when guys take pipes and restore them so people can enjoy them. Okay, Merle, you going to go? I'm going to let Merle out of the room. I got the door closed. Hang on. There you go, buddy. I got the door closed. Fifty degrees in Oklahoma. Hey, buddy. I know. Mommy will be home soon. So you can see even now it's hard for me to hold my head up. My necks are hurting so much. Hey, don't mess with the stand. Don't knock my camera over. Worried about him knocking the camera around. But anyhow, as I was saying, these guys that restore pipes. Yeah. God bless them. Because. You missed them. Hang on. I'll try to get them. Night Piper's in the house. Hang on. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come up. Oh, uh, he don't want to come up. You see him back there? Come here. Come on. Come on. It's a good boy. He's a good boy. Look at this. Look at, look at, look. Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hey, Daddy, that pipe smoke smells good. I like that smell of that. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Aren't you just that sweet little bubby? He's my buddy. <laughs> He's a good dog. Today marks one year since we picked him up. Today is the first one year anniversary of us picking him up. Is that mommy? Go get her. Go get her. Go get her. I think I think my wife's home. Um, well, we picked him up a year ago today. We've had him exactly one year. Um, we got him at eight weeks old. And he was just, he was about this big. Now he's about, he's about 80, 85 pounds. 
He's a big boy. He's he's a uh, very energetic. Loves to play. Trying to keep the smoke to go out towards the fan. Because the office door is wide open. And I'm going to catch grief. Mark! Your ears must have been itching. We were singing your praises. Look at that, Mark. Huh? Mark, you recognize that pipe, don't you, brother? Look at that pipe. Beautiful pipe. But, uh, yeah, we had him one year. <sighs> now he's laying by my feet. Thanks, Mark. I like, I like this style. I didn't think I'd, you know, I really got into these. Oh, Mark, that's what I meant to tell you. I don't know if I... Told you this before, Mark. Mark knows I lost my other LL Bean pipe. Mark, I found it. I found it. But I want to get it restored. So I'll be sending it down to you. I think we talked about that before. So I need to need to send it down to you. So I can get that. That's a that's a you know bent billiard obviously compared to the other one, but you can see how nice and new this one is, looking new looking compared. To, so it's got a little bit of wear and tear on it. So it it just needs a good it needs a good restoration. So you can see. Just needs a good restoration. So I'll be sending that down to. Yeah, I am too, Mark. Um, I almost regret. I had a. I had a. I have another LL Bean. This is my uh, Brigham. Or not Brigham, Bertram. Broke the stem off inside. Dropped it on the floor. I had one shaped like that. It was another LL Bean. And I lost that one as well. It needed a stem and I can't find it anywhere. I have no I cannot find it anywhere. And that's the problem when you move. Piano Piper, welcome. It's the only thing I hate about moving. When you lose when you lose a box. You lose a box. Yeah, that Bertram, I dropped it on the floor. And it's a shame because it's been a year. And, uh, fortunately, I didn't break the shaft. But I got to get that out. Then I got to get a new stem put on it. Because it's a great smoking pipe. So. Um, Archie Boswell is going to do that for me. I told him about it. And he said bring it down. So. Yeah I know that Mark. You're getting there. You'll get there. Pipe Grump. Welcome. Well, you can't disappoint Mrs. Grump. The Mrs., you have to take care of the Mrs. Tom D'Angelangelangelangelo, my Italiano friend. How you doing? Tommy D. Yo, yo, yo. Tom's my buddy that's supposed to come down tomorrow. Mm. 
no, 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 Merle, no, Merle, no, no, can't get into the trash can, where's mommy, hey, hey, Boswell's best. I'll tell you what. Smokes great. And uh, you can see this isn't a big bowl. And I'm not I'm only about halfway down. Hey Pittsburgh. Yeah, next week's good. It, yeah, Tom, you got you would be coming down. Over that pass through Hazelden and Tamaqua. Yeah, we'll, we'll reschedule for next week. Um, that'll give me a little bit more spending money. Hopefully the missus didn't hear that. And, uh, yeah, we'll go next week. I'd, I'd rather not take the chance. I'd feel bad if you got in an accident on the way down. And uh, maybe we'll make a video when we're there. That'd be cool, Mark. I'd love to see the videos on that. I got a new tool in today, finally, that I want to do some woodwork. That's the one tool I've been working, for, waiting for. It's one of the tools I needed. Hey, hey, hey. Out of there. Merle's pushing me out from under my desk. He's a tall dog, and he thinks, come on, get out of there. He thinks he can fit in small spaces. So, i got to keep him out of there. But, anyhow. Yeah, get Merle a pipe. No, he's, he's sneaky. He's trying to sneak into my trash can. He's trying to sneak into it. He goes in there and he grabs out whatever's in there and then he plays. That's the thing with red bones. Um, they're very smart dogs. Very affectionate. If you turn your back on them, them suckers, man, they will... Uh, they'll run wild on you. So i got to keep watching him. We need to go out, buddy. Do you need to go out? Is that what you want? video on how to make the cowboy coffee Muhammad phone call Mark got a phone call uh, Muhammad if you're at, if you're asking about the cowboy coffee yeah I, I can do a video on that now real cowboy coffee you put what's called chicory chicory root oh mrs. beard Welshman must be home that means I can shut the door hang on I'm shutting my door now. Merle opened up the door. But real cowboy coffee has uh, has what's called chicory in it. I think it's a root. I don't, I don't make it like that. Because I'd have to order it online. Get it sent in. And I've never had it with that. Just boil water, pour the coffee, grounds in. It's real easy. All right, Pipe Grump, have a good night. Enjoy the movie with the wife. But, uh, yeah, it's the the when you make cowboy coffee, 
if I drink percolated coffee, I could drink probably four, five cups, six cups, but then my stomach gets upset. So what the cowboy coffee does is when you make it that way, it gets rid of the acidic levels in the coffee when you boil it like that. And I can drink a pot, a large pot of coffee all day long. Um, and it doesn't upset my stomach. So that's the one good thing about cowboy coffee. Boil the water, dump the grounds in, let it simmer, pour some cold water in there, and that pushes all the coffee grounds to the bottom. Let it sit for a few minutes, pour the coffee and drink. But when you make it that way, it gets rid of the acidic level, so it doesn't upset the stomach as much. And I've been finding that with... Um, yeah, caffeine over. I do de decaf. Although there's still some caffeine in decaf. Um, but I, I did I did this whole 30 diet uh, back in the fall and lost a bunch more weight. And what I found out is after I did the the whole 30 <laughs> cheater. Yeah, I am Dave. I'm sorry. Uh, I just my system. Well, I ran out of decaf, so I've been using caffeinated for the past two days. Um, but I did the, the whole 30 diet when I came back, um, off of that, some of the foods I used to, and some of the things I used to do, I just can't do them anymore. Um, I can't drink beer anymore, which is fine. Cause I'm not a big beer drinker. It upsets my stomach. Dairy products upset my stomach. It messes with the digestive system. Um, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Beer puts weight on. Uh, hence the beer belly name. And the dairy. Too much dairy is not good for you anyway. So and now I drink my coffee, my water. I sell them comfort on occasion. And wine. Wine settles the stomach. Merle's out there barking at something. Thank you, Muhammad. I appreciate that. I, you know, Richard, um, it's never affected me. Um, I used to drink a lot of Mountain Dew and soda. And it never kept me up. I could fall asleep like that. Never, never really bothered me. Um, makes you pee a lot. <laughs> Other than that, never, never really bothered me. As far as sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, piano, I'm the same way. I drink a whole pot and fall asleep in a heartbeat. It's that, it's just that simple. In the summertime, I cut back. I cut back and then I, um, I'll drink probably a half pot a day in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, when I worked on the ambulance, there was a pizza shop and he always took good care of us. He fed us every Friday night. We, we would feed us for free. And when the restaurant closed every night, he'd bring food over for us to eat and he had a picnic one day at his house this guy was from Italy and uh, yeah Jameson's would put you to sleep too along his in his hallway on the wall was this big machine 
beautiful. I said, well, it looked like a still. I said, what is that? He says, that's, exp that's espresso. Never heard of it. I was just a young lad then. Oh, you got to try it. He gives me this little itty bitty coffee cup. Because he told me it was like coffee. I said, well, what's this? He goes, trust me, you can't drink more than this. My heart was racing. I could feel my heart beating. I was hyper. I was climbing the walls. It drove my partner nuts. Then I had to lay down because it, it was a hard crash. You know, you just, all that energy and then boom, it just hits you. And you crash. You just can't, you can't do it. I mean, I just, I was like, I don't know how you people do this. But when you grow up like that, I mean, he's just drinking one cup after another. Not me. Saw him a couple days after that, and he, what'd you think? And I, I'll never drink that stuff again. That stuff, and it's been 20 some years. I haven't, and I won't. That'd give me a heart attack. Good grief. I don't have enough hair on my chest to handle that stuff. Speaking of a hairy chest, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's a bed it's a bedtime snack for them. <laughs> of course, real Italians, Richard, what's dinner to them? It's a three hour ordeal. So I mean if you ever if you ever I um he tells me that you Americans eat too fast. He said in Italy it's an event. Eating dinner is an event. And it can go three, four hours. You know, that's just the way it works. All right, Pittsburgh, you have a good night. God bless you. I don't know if you guys are getting that weather we're getting. Be, be safe. Keep them airplanes coming in. Yeah, separate courses for pasta and meat. I had a friend that went over there, and he said everywhere you went, you walked. He said you could eat all you want because you walked everywhere you went. Um, he toured old Italy, just old style villages, and he said you walked everywhere, and dinner was like that. He said it was, it was an ordeal, it was an event, you know. They they would eat dinner, they would start dinner at eight o'clock at night and finish around ten eleven o'clock. This is another good blend. Boswell's best. Let's see if I can show you some of this. Uh, that light's not doing it justice. It's uh, oh, it's hard to show you. My tray has got some gunk on it. You can see it. got a very pleasant tin note or jar note it's a uh, mild to medium if you're smoking it with a with a filter it's a very mild smoke if you're smoking it yeah <laughs> they drink wine all day that's right old dirty they drink wine all day and then they eat dinner after the fact they get it right you never see an Italian alcoholic from Italy. You know why? Because they're drinking all day long. Their kids grow up with it. So you don't see many native Italians that are alcoholics. My dad's biological birth mother, his mother that gave birth to him, was full-blooded Italian. And her family didn't speak English. So my dad's grandparents on, my, on, his, on his mother's side, my grandmother's side, 
um, they didn't speak English. All right, Tilted Piper Steve. Hey, check out his uh, YouTube channel, Kilted Piper Steve. He's got good content. You stay safe too, Steve. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. We're almost done here anyways. Yeah, you're right, Richard. Yeah. That, you know, Dirty, when you talk about the wine and all day, you know, dinner and wine all day long, my Italian relatives up in Wilkesbury, we would go out and visit, and you would show up, and they would have, I called it a meal, they called it a gathering. And this is how you socialize. This is how you spend time with family. And they had all kinds of food, wine, everywhere. And it was an event. It was an event. That was the way we did things when we went up to see my dad's family on the uh, the Italian side of the family. And it was just the way it was. I mean, you just they just you walk up and it's manja, manja is Italian for eat dinner, dinner time. Eat manja, manja. That's what my uh, great aunt used to say, manja, manja. So you'd eat. Um, yeah, Tom, you're Italian. Big on food and family. Yeah. Italians get it right, man. But that's the way it would be. It would be like there's a whole spread, and it would be like you just got there at like 7 o'clock at night. When we get to Wilkesbury, it'd be at seven, seven, eight o'clock at night. And you're eating all this food before you go to bed, and they would be up for hours. They put us kids to bed. And they'd be up for hours just eating food and drinking wine, and it's just crazy. Mimi, I think it was my aunt Mimi. Mimi, Mimi, I think it was aunt Mimi. I gotta ask my mom. <laughs> yeah, hey, Mike. Different times. I remember going down to the South Philly, the Italian market. Mike, you and Old Dirty can attest to this. The Italian market was something when it was the Italian market. It's no longer the Italian market. And you could go down there and you'd get brujut and you could get some pepperoni. I mean, we used to load up on the pepperoni sticks. Yeah, everybody's on an iPhone today. Nobody wants to talk. All right, Piano Piper. Have a good night. Thanks for joining. What the Italian market down in South Philly? Man. That was so cool to go to when we were kids. We'd get pretzels, which are the cookies, and cannolis. And now it's nothing like it used to be. Nothing like it used to be. It there's it's a shame you know you want people to integrate but it was neat because you had neighborhoods it was an Italian neighborhood a Polish neighborhood uh, Puerto Rican neighborhood it was you know Ita Irish neighborhood you know and you just don't today it's all tacos <laughs> you know you don't see that anymore and my mom's side of the family my mom's Polish so we would go to New Jersey, and the street that my grandmother lived on, the street my mom grew up on, it was all Polish people on that street. And they had a deli down the street from my grandmother's house. And we used to walk down, and we'd get Polish food, kielbasa, and smoked fish, and stuff like that. Yeah. Italians and the Irish, boy, they both know how to drink. 
But we would go down to the deli down the street with my grandmother. We would walk down. Little mom and pop deli, all Polish. It was neat growing up, getting to see both sides of the family background and seeing, you know, where our family roots were. And Because my mom's grandparents were Polish immigrants. They didn't speak any English. Just like my dad's grandparents. They were Polish immigrants, or Italian immigrants. They didn't speak any English. My, I think my dad's mother spoke a little English. She died when he was a little boy. So I never got to meet her. Um, but I think she, I, I would... I would assume she spoke some English because she married my grandfather. Yeah. Largest immigrant groups, the Italians and the Irish. And the Irish, I think it was to escape the famine and the British rule, if I got my history correct. And the Italians, um, I guess it was to s escape the fascist uh, party and rule. And then, unfortunately, um, my, my dad's mother died when he was a little boy, like I said. That was during World War II. And... It, uh, his stepmom didn't like him spending time with his, his Italian grandparents because we were at war with Italy and Germany and, and all that. That was around the time of Mussolini. And my dad used to sneak to go see his grandparents. And that's a shame. My dad's long, long since gone. He's been gone 2005, 2006. So, long time. Fifteen years, I think. Emerald Lagasse. Ah, oh, I did not know that. I learned something today. So Emeril Lagasse, I always thought he was Italian, so Portu Portuguese and French. <laughs> yep, that's right, Old Dirty. They escaped horrible times and come to America and they're discriminated against. For a long time, for a long time, all through the 40s at least. Johnny knows. Johnny's Italiano. Well, this pipe's done. Coffee's long since been done. We've been going almost two hours. So I appreciate you all. I just want to say oh, an hour and a half. I want to say thank you once again. Uh, like I said, it'll be a couple weeks before we get back to lives. I gotta, I gotta get some of this stuff done. Um, I'll probably post a video here and there. Um, check out Cane Rod Piper on Rumble and Old Dirty Piper on Rumble and Classical Pipes on Rumble. Those are the three that I do know that are on, yeah, First Slaves that I do know that are on Rumble. Uh, I'm not on Rumble yet. I don't think I am. I don't think I, I might have started something on there, but I don't remember. So check those guys out. Check out Rumble. Apparently there's no censorship over there. But they banned Parlor. So maybe they'll petition to get rid of Rumble. One of these days, well, I, I won't go there. But anyhow, if you don't see those guys putting up videos here, go to Rumble. You can see their stuff on Rumble. Old Dirty's been putting some up for 
few weeks now, Johnny, I think you have. Cane Rod Piper's been putting a bunch up on there. Classical Pipes, I think he left, completely left YouTube, and he's only on Rumble now. I think that's where he's at, you know, exclusively. It's kind of hard to leave YouTube because you build up such a following, and then you go to another platform, and it's like you're starting from scratch because a lot of the pipe community is on YouTube, and you get used to it. It's like they got you, man. They got you. It's like Facebook. Well, Facebook, I'm about done with Facebook myself. All my kids are adults. They're out. They're gone. I was only on to watch them. I've been staying on, I don't know why, on Facebook. But I've been staying on Facebook. I'm tired of it. I'm ready to get rid of it. But anyhow, thank you all very much. I appreciate you coming on. I'll see you in a few weeks for the next live. I'll post. I'll put a post up when the next one is. And uh, in the meantime, I'll do a video or two here and there when I can. But i got to get all these things done. These people are counting on me. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have to do another surgery. If I do another surgery, I'll know in February to repair the damage in the neck from the broken pin. Then it will be a while before I get back on. Um, but hopefully I won't need surgery. Because I don't want to do another year of this. So... Good night, everybody. You're welcome, old Dirty Piper. Good night, Tom. Good night, Dirty Tom. We'll talk about next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming on. I appreciate it. God bless. God loves you. I love you. Light them up.